Joey Bishop Show. Joey, Joey, Joey. Starring Joey, Joey Bishop. What are you hiding? A little surprise for the sweetest, most wonderful mother in the world. You're worried about the bills again. <laughs> now that you mention it, yes. Well, I'm sorry about the phone, Joey. But it's not all my fault. They must have changed managers down there. Huh? In all the time we've been getting those shut-off notices, this is the first time they ever did it. Probably some guy down there bucking for promotion. Well, don't you give it another thought, dear. I'll drive down tomorrow morning and pay you. You, uh, you better do it early before they repossess the car. <laughs> now, look, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Joey. Uh, would you excuse us, Larry, please? Mom and I are about to have a little meeting of the budget. Good, you can slip in a little item for me then. I know where I can get a skeleton cheap. You know, like bones. Oh, what's wrong with the one in the lab at medical school? Are you kidding? There are so many guys in my class, you practically have to make an appointment to study it. <laughs> so I want to bone up at home. <laughs> and for just 60 bucks, I can get a used skeleton. What other kind is there? <laughs> if these bills aren't paid, you can use mine. Uh oh. Mom's homemade bookkeeping again, huh? All right, forget about Mr. Bones. Oh, and about Mom. You gotta be firm. Women are all alike. You gotta lay down the rules, otherwise they make up their own. Uh, hang in there, boy. <laughs> Isn't Larry a scream? Oh, thank goodness both my boys have a wonderful sense of humor. Mom, I'm not joking. At the rate you're going, we will soon be reliving that wonderful year of 1929. Oh, I'm sorry, Joey. I was sure my budget system was going to work this month. Mom, when it comes to bills, there's only one system. Pay them. Then you're going to have to give me more money. That was not the system I had in mind. <laughs> Oh, Mother, there's the most tremendous news. I've got a chance to audition for a part in the big TV show. Della, that's wonderful. Well, there's only one thing. It's going to cost me. Well, the part calls for a girl with a deep, sultry voice. But for $20 an hour, I can get a dramatic coach. $20 an hour? Well, Mr. Stowalski says he can lower my voice three full tones, and that's cheap at $20 an hour, Joe. Try talking him into $2 an hour. That should lower your voice. All right. Just thought I'd ask. Joey, don't you think we could find the money somewhere for Stella? Look, Mom, I can't even find the money to pay these bills. Now, don't get upset, but what happened to it? Nothing happened to it, dear. Actually, I saved you money. I took advantage of the month-end sale at Thompson's dress shop. Another sale? Joey... The dress was not for me, it was for Betty. Look, Mom, I know you like to buy things for your daughter, but she's married. Why can't Frank buy her clothes? Look at all the money he saves on food. He's always eating here. But, Joey, they were selling two dresses for the price of one. So the dress I got for myself didn't cost you one red cent. Uh, the way you're saving money for me, I should be a millionaire in no time. <laughs> Mother Barnes, Joey boy. Hello, Frank. I just came over to borrow that platter that you're gonna loan us. Betty and I are embarrassed about eating here so much. Tonight we're gonna have dinner home. That's a switch. He's the only one I know who says Grace coming into the house. <laughs> Maybe one night he'll invite us to his house for dinner. I'll see you, Mother Barnes. <laughs> Some leftovers, Joey. What was it left over from? Pig's knuckles? <laughs> well, it's all right to be generous, Mom. I think it's a wonderful thing. But you've got to pay the bills first. 
You're right, dear. I'm sorry. I just don't know how to manage money instead of being a help as a mother should. I'm a hindrance. Mom, you're not a hindrance. I can face the truth, and the truth is I'm just a burden to you. Just a burden. If only I had a little income of my own. I know I'll get a job. And then I could help you. I could pay the bills myself with my own money and stop being a millstone around your neck. Mom, don't talk like that. And for heaven's sake, forget that job business. You're too old to start working. Fifty-five is not too old. Mom, you're 57. <laughs> Joy, I'm sorry, but our luncheon date is off for today. You have a date with another girl. Really? America's number one expert on domestic problems, Miss Dora Dunphy. Again? Those are the orders from wee Willie Willoughby himself. Miss Dunphy's in town for a week of breakfast, luncheons, and teas, uh, beginning at the Glendale Women's Club this morning. You know something? <laughs> J.P. Willoughby. Mr. Barnes, who's calling? Uh, Mr. Story. Story? He says he's the manager of the supermarket in your neighborhood. Hello, Mr. Story. Look, if Mom forgot to pay the bills, I'll stop by and... She's 57. He says Mom put down over 21 on the application. <laughs> application? What application? Thank you for calling, Mr. Story. Thank you. She did it. Mom applied for a job as cashier in a supermarket. Joey, why does your mother want to go to work? It's my fault. I'm going home and put a stop to this. Joey! Miss Dunphy, remember? I'm sorry, this is more important. My mother's not going to go to work. <laughs> to get someone else to serve the star dump the arm. Sure he'll understand. And as I've written so many times in my column, the situation of husband and wife both working has created a new kind of family problem. Now, this is the modern version of the battle between the sexes. A battle, may I add, that can never be won. There's always too much fraternization with the enemy. <laughs> Now, ladies, if you have any Deodora questions, you can save the price of a stamp. I have a problem. For my birthday, my husband gave me some beautiful black lace nightgowns. Well, as long as your husband buys you black lace nightgowns, you have no problem. <laughs> my husband's not the problem. It's my teenage daughter. Instead of wearing her perfectly good flannel nightgowns, she's forever getting into my bureau drawer and taking my things. What can I do? Two things. One, be firm as a parent should. And two, put a lock on your bureau drawer. <laughs> I have a teenage problem, too. I'm trying to teach mine the value of money by having her pay her own bills. But instead of paying them, all too frequently she spends the money on what she calls emergencies, like uh, Elvis Presley records. <laughs> so what does a poor mother do? Well, that's a question I'm asked repeatedly, and I always give the same answer. I call it Operation Sneaky. Now, instead of doling out the money in bits, give her a lump sum each week. Now, this will teach her how to budget. And she can have her Elvis Presley records after the bills are paid. I tried that. It didn't work. She went to a sale and bought two dresses for the price of one. <laughs> How old is your teenager? 57. <laughs> it's a thrilling afternoon. A pleasure. Bless you, dear Dora. Bless you. We must do it again. I'm sorry, Miss Dumpy. I hope I didn't spoil your lecture. Oh, don't be silly, Joey. You were a huge success. You know how women love to see a man baffled by female problems. This, uh, this 57-year-old teenager, your mother, tell me about her. Oh, I don't want to bother you. Oh, come on, maybe I can help you. Well, I support my family. My mother has the crazy idea that she's become a burden. 
So to help out, she's applied for a job in a supermarket. I understand. It's a very familiar problem. Oh, don't get me wrong. It's not just the money I'm worried about. I don't want her to feel she's a burden. I know, but that's part of being a mother. A very sensitive part. She spends half her life taking care of her children, and when they start taking care of her, she doesn't feel needed anymore. You have to find some way to make her feel as though she was still giving, not just receiving. Yeah. That's right. As a matter of fact, yesterday she said if she could just have an income of her own, she would... Well, be... that's your solution, isn't it? Instead of you giving her money each month, suppose some relative died and left her a regular income. Then she'd be independent, happy to pay her bills with what she believed to be her own money, and she'd watch those pennies a lot more closely if she thought they were her own. I, I just can't think of a relative who was not already on my payroll. <laughs> Dream one up. You know, I know a woman who had a problem with her husband. She made a lot more money than he did, and it almost broke them up. But, just in time, a long-lost uncle of his died in Australia and left him a monthly income all his own. Now, isn't it worth a small white lie to give dignity and meaning to the life of someone you hold very dear? I just came from the post office. I got a registered letter, and guess what? You've been drafted. <laughs> no, no, Joey, it's a miracle. My prayers have been answered. Mom, whatever are you talking about? Joey, do you remember my telling you about my mother's second cousin, Wilbur Anderson? Yes. The one who stayed in Europe after World War I, and the family lost track of him? Have you heard from him? Yes. No. Oh, dear, I'm too excited to hear you read it. Dear Mrs. Barnes, under the will of the late Wilbur Anderson, who passed away in London, England, you are named beneficiary of a trust fund that will pay you the sum of $300 each and every month. Son of a gun, that's the same amount of money I give you every month. <laughs> we are happy to enclose your first check herewith. Very truly yours, Barrett and Barrett, attorneys at law. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Cousin Wilbur is dead. <laughs> I, I mean, of course, I'm sorry he passed on. Mom, as long as he had to go, he couldn't have picked a better time. <laughs> Just wonderful. Like I said, a miracle. But, Joey, there's something about this letter that bothers me. What's that? Everybody on my mother's side of the family had bad sinus trouble. And a damp, foggy place like London would be the last place Cousin Wilbur would pick to live. Mom, he didn't live there. He died there. <laughs> Don't question your good fortune. Enjoy it. Oh, I will, Joey. I will. And you know what I'm going to enjoy most about it? Taking the load off your shoulders. From now on, I'm going to run the house, pay the bills out of my money, not yours. Now, don't argue. My mind's made up. Who's arguing? I mean, it's your money. Oh, my. I must call Betty. <laughs> Now, remember, Miss Barnes, practice, practice, and practice. The voice must come from here, not from here. Keep the voice low and resonant. Oh, Joey. Uh, hello, darling. This is Mr. Stowalski, my dramatic coach. Stella, didn't I tell you? Oh, Mother's paying for it, out of her legacy. Isn't it wonderful? No, no, no. Miss Barnes, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> isn't it wonderful? Yeah, 
wonderful. That's good. That's good. That's good. Only, only a little more volume. Project, project. Oh, oh, oh. Keep it in, keep it low. <laughs> In, keep it low. Keep it in, keep it low. Mother Barnes, this is beautiful. <laughs> Betty is going to look just gorgeous in this. I can hardly wait to take it home and show it to her. It's nothing, really nothing. It's wonderful to know I can afford some presents now. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, did I marry into a wonderful family, huh? <laughs> Mom, what is this all about? I mean, Betty's coat, Stella's voice lessons, the skeleton in the closet. What about the unpaid bills? But, Joey, it wouldn't be a windfall if I had to use my legacy for bills. <laughs> you mean the whole thing's a phony? Well, what about that letter from the lawyers? I borrowed the stationery and typed the letter myself. <laughs> Boy, when you go... You're really a swinging thing. I went for broke, I made it. <laughs> Look, it's a pretty nice thing you've tried to do, Joey. But you're not very bright for your age. Look, we've got the most wonderful mother in the whole world, only she just doesn't know how to handle money. Somehow, we've got to teach her to have as much of a head for budgeting as she has for bargain sales. The day I started work, Mom stopped budgeting. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What would happen if you lost your job? I'd kill myself. <laughs> That's the coward's way out. I mean, if you lost your job, Mom would have to support the family with her legacy. If I lost my job, there wouldn't be any legacy. Oh, come on, boy, get with it. Look, instead of telling Mom the truth about the trust fund, tell her a lie about losing your job. Then she'll have to budget. Come again? Just tell her that you lost your job. And what do I tell her when I go to the office every day? Well, tell her that you're out looking for work. Don't you see? If Mom thinks that you've lost your job and the only money coming in is her legacy, then there's only one thing she can do. She'll have to, to learn, learn to budget. budget. <laughs> My dearest teen brother, you may be wasting your time in medical school. With an ingenious mind like yours, you... you could be a politician. All quiet on the economy front, sir. How's it going? Boy, Mom's on a real economy kick. Look what happened to Frank. <laughs> Come on, now, how's it really going? It's working like a charm. I even have to return Chester to get Mom's money back. Sort of a refund on an empty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, by the way, I had to let Stella in on the plot. You what? I had to, but she promised not to say anything. She almost flipped when Mom canceled her voice lessons. Now, I'll see you at dinner, if we have any. <laughs> Would you like a second helping, Joey? No, no, thanks, Mom. Don't you like my bean souffle? Oh, it's great. It's as good as the baked beans we had last night. Even better than the fried beans we had the night before. It's just that uh, I'm not as hungry now as I was the early part of the week. Oh, it's delicious, really, just delicious. Oh, but you know how it is. Oh, we actresses have to watch our weight. Yeah, me too. Uh, people don't like a fat doctor. They think he's overcharging them. Oh, hello, Frank. How are you? Beans again tonight, huh? Well, this is the last time, I promise you that. The last time from now on. Steaks all around. What are you selling now? Used cows? <laughs> <laughs> Mother Barnes, I tell you, your money troubles are over. I was worried about you, you know, with Joey out of work and everything, but then all of a sudden, it hit me. How would you like to double the income from your legacy? Double it? 
Yeah? I stopped in a bank this morning, you see. And right now you're getting $300 a month, right? All right, the bank tells me that most trust funds pay 4%. Well, at $300 a month, that means your principal has got to be at least $90,000. Now, that's a tidy little sum if you really put it to work for yourself. Just a minute, Frank. Joey, I am not talking about any fly-by-night deal. I am talking about the kind of investments that banks like to handle. Real estate. I've got a deal. Frank! With this deal, you can take your $90,000 out of the trust fund, and you can net at least $600 a month free and clear. Why, that's wonderful! Mom, it's a trust fund! You, you gotta trust them. <laughs> what is the trouble with you? You're always running scared. Mr. Barnes, we'll see my lawyer in the morning. Joey, I don't see what you're uh, so upset about. It's my money, and it certainly won't do any harm to go down and ask Frank's lawyer about it. Mom, I've got to tell you something. Now, you're going to hate me, but I've got to tell you. There is no legacy. I just made it up. I didn't want you to feel like you were a burden. What? And I didn't lose my job. I just pretended I did so you'd, you'd learn the value of money. Now, go ahead and hate me. Hate you? Why, I'm the luckiest mother in the world. To have three such wonderful children who would go to all this trouble just to make me feel that I was not a burden. After all, here I am, 55 years old. 57? <laughs> yes. Here I am, 55 years old. <laughs> and it's about time I learned how to handle money. And I'm going to start the first thing tomorrow morning. Mom, you're not angry? Of course not. Boy, the way this day started, I never thought it would have a happy ending. A little more bean souffle. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Story. This is Mrs. Barnes. Is that job you offered me as a cashier still open? Oh, thank you. I'll be there first thing in the morning. Bye.